retro film maven here. And once again, my friends, it's time to go back to the Old West. Uh, when you think of Westerns, typically uh, the ones that are considered the best are often cited as being uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Once Upon a Time of the West. Um, Rio Bravo. Uh, films like with John Wayne or Clint Eastwood or directed by John Ford or uh, Sergio Leone. But one of the Westerns that always comes up as a the quintessential Western or one of the best Westerns or one of the best motion pictures in general is 1952's Fred Zinnemann's High Noon, uh, direct, uh, starring Gary Cooper. Now, High Noon... Uh, concept and story is is uh very unique and and, and they, they are very very engaging as it follows the story of one man who must stand alone against impossible odds now it sounds like that's like a, an underdog story of epic proportions that's been told off and on like, throughout the decades and it, that would be true uh and High Noon itself has certainly been remade, or or remade in uh, conceptually, like like uh, Three O'clock High, uh, or or films like that, or even High Noon Two with Lee Majors. Um, but High Noon is a uh, is a fantastic western that um, that at the time when uh, westerns were more grandiose and they were in color and uh, presented in, in, in cinemascope. Uh, Zinnemann uh, took the uh, a different approach and decided to make it black and white and more constrained, more real, more focused and stuck to the uh, the, the industry standard at the time of one, uh, I guess it was a 166 or maybe a 133 aspect ratio. Um, but technical aside, High Noon is a very engrossing, tense, entertaining, and well-performed uh, Western. Uh, the film stars Gary Cooper as uh, Marshall uh, Will Kane, who just got married to uh, Amy, played by Grace Kelly, and just as he's ready to uh, get out of town with his uh, new bride and hang up the badge, he gets word that someone he put away has been released from prison and is on his way to town on the 12 o'clock train to exact revenge. Uh, that, and the great thing about the film is, is like it's it's a great exercise in editing, and uh, because Zinnemann and actually uh, this reminds me of uh, Nick of Time, uh, the uh, the film with uh, Johnny Depp, where it's a real time thriller. Also on the level of 24, also. But um, High Noon, uh, when, when we hear that the, uh, the villain Frank Miller is on the 12 o'clock train, there literally is only maybe about an hour or 15 minutes left in the film. And that's about how much time uh, Kane has until, until Miller arrives on, on the, at High Noon. So... The film follows these 75, 80 minutes in, in Kane's life as he tries to uh, rally a posse made up of local town folk and, and deputies and friends. And the tense thing about it is, and the most interesting thing about it is, it explores the, uh, the moral ambiguity and, uh, of um, doing what's right, doing what's smart, uh, doing... Uh, doing what's best for yourself as opposed to doing what 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 should be done um the uh the uh, town folk and former deputies um are reluctant to get involved in this the uh, they know who the villain is and they know his reputation and and kane is instrumental in helping clean up the town but the interesting thing is, is that when, when push comes to shove and, and a imminent threat is approaching, these very town folk that came protected turn their back on him because they don't want to get involved. Despite all the work that Kane has done to, to make this town reputable again and safe. So 
Cooper is left on his own devices to fend for himself and take this uh, take these guys on on his own. Uh, the film, other than Cooper and, and uh, Kelly, the film also stars uh, Lloyd Bridges, uh, Thomas Mitchell, uh, Katie Horado, who, who's really good as Helen Ramirez, uh, uh, and Lon Chaney and Harry Morgan, and a early uh, and an early role for one of the earliest roles for Lee Van Cleef, uh, who, interestingly enough, I read that he was uh, up. I can't remember which part he was. Oh, he was trying to play. He was going to uh, play the the Lloyd Bridges part, but uh, Zinnemann felt he looked too villainy enough. Was too villainous looking rather and made him a villain instead uh, one of the uh, henchmen so um the cast overall is really good uh boy bridges is probably one of the earliest films i remember ever seeing him in and uh, was very good as as the deputy and his and his character arc was interesting because you when you hear a deputy you think he's like he's always there to back up the, sh the the marshal or the sheriff but this one kind of just wants the marshal out of the way and that's the same for other other town folk uh and uh, as i mentioned uh katie Hurado, uh as uh helen ramirez is uh when you first meet her you probably think she's a a woman of ill repute but it turns out she's actually a businesswoman and so that's just uh a, a unfortunate stereotype that we apply to this period and, and when we see women in, in, in hotels and, and whatnot. We immediately assume they're, they're prostitutes or something like that. But actually, this woman is actually just a, a, a businesswoman who, who was at this hotel who happens to know uh, the marshal and, and the the villain, Frank Miller. Uh, High Noon is, a, a, as I said, is a, a well, is a well-paced and entertaining film and engaging and grossing. And it, it's really uh, set the standard for for what westerns can be they don't have to be epic in scope large and grandiose they can be more more smaller uh intimate and uh and just as equally engaging and grandiose as those bigger films but it, it's uh definitely uh, benefits from a great screenplay by carl foreman which is based on a uh in part on a uh, magazine story from john w cunningham named the 10 star and uh and, and well directed by Zinnemann and of course you thanks to great performances by Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly uh that it, it's a very compelling and engaging western that certainly does earn its reputation of being amongst the best so I would have to give High Noon a high ranking of four and a half out of five stars it's definitely a uh, it's a great western and at an hour and 25 minutes a, it's a quick ride that's that's a that's that's a ride worth taking four and a half stars out of five so have you heard of high noon have you seen high noon what did you think of high noon please comment below and let me know and uh if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel so you can be uh find more retro reviews such as high noon outland and other films that i review and be sure to hit that uh, bell button to be notified when I do so. So until next time, my friends, happy trails.